if you're narrow-minded, sexist, have anything against a female-fronted rock band, close this now. I know my rock and roll, believe me. I have seen Guns N' Roses multiple times, and if you haven't already seen my review video of the Not Endless Lifetime Tour, link below. I've seen the Rolling Stones, Van Halen. I know my rock and roll. And I know it a lot better than most of the people that were actually alive during these bands' prime. So anyway, if you have anything against The Pretty Reckless, because this video clearly is about The Pretty Reckless, just don't watch it. That's it. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna go into like my history about how I discovered this band. Taylor Momsen, so she's the singer of The Pretty Reckless. They put out their first album in 2010. Obviously, because of my obsession with Guns N' Roses, like I was looking up where Slash is gonna be playing. So I saw that they were going to a festival called Welcome to Rockville. Oh my God, no way, The Pretty Reckless is going, like cool. So we went, we watched The Pretty Reckless's set after the first day got completely rained out. Taylor Momsen came out on stage. She was wearing like the long, like black duster kimono thing. And I was just like, wow, she's fucking cool. And they did, they broke out into the song Follow Me Down. And like immediately I was like, this is hardcore. Like I like this. So then a, a couple weeks later, I was back home in Jersey and I saw that The Pretty Reckless was going to be going to a festival in Camden called MM Barbecue. I was actually really excited because I had started listening to The Pretty Reckless a little bit, like between that couple week period in between the two shows. Um, so when I saw them the second time, I actually was able to sing along with the songs and I thought it was amazing. And so that was incredible. Like after that, I started listening to them religiously. I got Going to Hell and um, I thought it was so awesome. And then I picked up Light Me Up. That was their first album. So comparing Going to Hell and Light Me Up, obviously it's like not even a competition. So. July 14th, it was the day of the first Guns N' Roses concert, I was in New Philadelphia, is when they released Take Me Down, which is the first single that came off of Who You Selling For. So also in July, like right before the Guns N' Roses concerts, I started writing for Alternative Nation. I'll provide the links below also to the Pretty Reckless articles that I've done. About a month ago, I get an email from the PR that um, they sent me the album. I listened to it about five times, five times consecutively, um, and then wrote my article, my review. Basically, it's just gonna be like a video review. I'm kinda gonna reiterate a lot of the things I said in the article, but like I wanted to play some samples of the music and kinda like get a little more in detail about it. So, we're gonna get into that. It's a lot more eccentric than Going to Hell. It's the most experimental one by far. There's multiple genres of rock being covered on it. You can hear like all of the band's influences ranging from the 60s to the 90s and just like how they implement all of it together and make it sound good shows the extent of their talent. Um, the theme underlying this record is basically like the burdens and like of fame. You know, Pink Floyd, like Welcome to the Machine, talking about the music industry, like, you know, and, and the truth behind it and how, you know, Welcome to the Machine, like they're controlling you basically. So, because it's their third studio record. They've been involved in the music industry for a while, so they, they're they the machine. They're part of the machine. Is And I know Taylor Momsen has said multiple times that like, she doesn't like giving her interpretation behind the songs. She wants her fans to be able to kind of like take their own meaning from it and relate it to their lives in their own way, which is really good. You don't want to just throw a song at somebody and be like, okay, this is what this is about. I want them to utilize their own artistic portion of their brains. When they come so the opener for this album is my absolute favorite song on this album, by far. This song, it starts off very slow, piano interlude, like Taylor singing very like deeply, slowly, and you hear the build up start. And um, I, I don't know what language she's speaking. I'm not even gonna try to guess because I don't want to be an idiot. But she's not speaking English, she's like kind of like mumbling some words and then it gets louder progressively and then like the drums start coming in and it's just like this little ding ding you know you hear her say won't get out alive so like that's the one part that you can hear from that little like section of lyrics and literally from that point on this song sounds like Alice in Chains and I love Alice in Chains I think that might be why I'm so obsessed with it I don't know um, what I took from this song is that it's about like you know having to live up to the standards of music critics and like you know if you mess up they come to hang you and you have to stand straight and tall and brace your neck, you know, like you gotta you gotta be ready for it. You just gotta take it and you gotta move on. Oh my God, wish I was there. 
So next is Oh My God. This was the second um, single that was released. It was early September, I think. This song, I think I had to listen to it a few times for it to grow on me because in the beginning it just, it was so fast paced and so heavy. Um, kind of reminds me of Birth Ritual by Soundgarden, but also Mind Your Manners by Pearl Jam because of the tempo and the drumming time. And this song is kind of just like saying like, talking about pressure and like how she feels like the weight on her back didn't feel like a ton and wants to take it back to when she was so dumb and innocent. Probably before she joined the music industry. And she didn't know that, you know, this lifestyle was gonna have come with so many burdens. Take me down. Third, number three is Take Me Down. This was the first single again. I'm very classic rock sounding. A lot of people are saying that it sounds like Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones. I mean, I guess if you're really, really, really examining like the melody of how she's singing the lyrics, maybe, but the music itself doesn't sound like it. If anything, the, the music itself, what it reminds me of is Dancing in the Street by Van Halen, but a lot like more of a slow paced version, just because of like the cowbells and stuff and like the way the drumming is being like rolled throughout the verses. Oh, and then at the end of the song, you know, she's saying sign with the devil and at the end of the song you hear like, oh, I got a record deal. So like that's basically just going to show that like she's saying like, she signed with the record deal and sign with the music industry and she's going down and the music industry is the devil so again there's that like welcome to machine reference Pink Floyd I'm a prisoner. fourth is prisoner this was another single that was released a few weeks ago actually when it got released I was really excited because I was like ooh I've been listening to this song for weeks already nobody else has and like now the public is hearing it this song is very 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 heavily blues influenced I it makes me think of Robert Johnson songs. It's like that 12 bar blues, like, you know, the repeating of the two lines and then the one line at the end of the verse that's like different. In the wild, wild city. Five is Wild City. Um, this song is really like jazzy. There's like, a, um, you know, she has background singers and a chorus and in the chorus. Um, this song was written about New York. So like, obviously, you know, it's gonna be the different song on the record because New York is different. I live by New York, I know. So like this song's very jazz and like funk oriented, you know, you can say I guess that it took some kind of inspiration from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm going back to the river. Track six, Back to the River. Love it. This was totally unexpected. I heard the, you know, the acoustic start. Blue skies all around me. Weekend house. I spent all the weekends in the countryside, in the woods, by a lake. So this song, like, literally, it took me back to that. Even though it's not back to the lake, it's back to the river. Literally, when the music bursts out and the drums start, there's like banjo mimicking guitar sounds and kind of. It's a very, very southern rock, country esque. It sounds kind of like you know something that like CCR or Leonard Skinner could have influenced, just like more fast paced and upbeat kind of. So it's like a modern version of like an old southern rock song. I really like this song. Makes me want to crack open a beer, go outside by a lake, even though I'm at college right now and there's no lake in sight, but trying to escape the fame. You know, she wants to go back to where, you know, it's barren and nobody knows who you are. You know, it's, there's just no fame there. There's no, there's no um, complications. Who are you selling for so track seven's Who Are You Selling For? Um, self-titled album title track. Is that what you call it? Self-titled? No, yeah, album title. I couldn't really figure out where the inspiration from the song came from, but then I saw in the other review that it sounded like it was influenced by the Smashing Pumpkins, which I can see. It's, it's simple, you know, there's not too much behind it. As I look out of my bedroom window. Track 8 is Bedroom Window. If you know anything about Taylor Moms, you know that she loves the Beatles, it was her favorite band like growing up and what she first started listening to, and that she idolizes John Lennon. So like this kind of reminds me of Norwegian Wood just because it's like acoustic and it kind of has like a fun little melody that you can sing along to. It, what it seems to me is it's like about her reflecting on her life and like you know, her actions and like what she's like involved herself in and kind of just like thinking about it. I've lost touch with what makes me human. I've lost touch with reality. So like, you know, cause I guess when you're a rock star and you have all this pressure on you, it's kind of like, you know, you feel like you're not human. You feel like more like a robot, more like you're just like spewing out things that are for pe the people, for the fans, which isn't always a bad thing. And this is like a nice song and a nice way of like her portraying that. Cause like it's not, she's not being aggressive. I'm um, nine is Living in the Storm. This song is very like alternative sounding. It's it's like kind of, it doesn't really sound like grungy or anything. It sounds more like, you know, like an alternative, like upbeat, like Foo Fighters-esque, I guess. This song is 
very like alternative sounding. It's it's like kind of it doesn't really sound like grungy or anything. It sounds more like you know like an alternative like upbeat like Foo Fighters esque. I guess it's just about like you know living in the storm. She's living in all this chaos and like being a part of this. So next we have Already Dead. Um, this song, it took me a while to figure out where I thought like the vibe sounded familiar from. And then the other day I cranked up Audio Slave in my car and it reminds me a lot of Getaway Car. Has that very old like, you know, jazz, blues based element to it. Honestly, when I think, when I hear the song, I kind of like think of like a flapper in a speakeasy singing it because it just has that really like old sounding vibe to it. Not that I think that's even the kind of music that they played at those things, but that's just kind of what it reminds me of. So I, I, I like that song. Screams a bit. Chris Cornell screams. She loves Chris Cornell. He's fucking amazing at screaming. I guess the devil's back. Oh, okay, so next is The Devil's Back. This song's interesting because it's slow and it's eerie and it's echoey. What do you really think of when you think of those things? Pink Floyd. The last four minutes of the song, this is the longest song in the record, the last four minutes are dedicated to Ben Phillips' guitar solo. It's very crisp, rich, echoing guitar sound, so it kind of reminds me of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Not trying to compare. I love Shine On You Crazy Diamond. It's one of my favorite songs. But that's just kind of what it reminds me of. It's like the end of the album, and it's after she's talking about all these burdens of fame and everything, it's kind of like, you know, the devil's back. We went to hell for our second album. And despite all of the, you know, pressures that we've had to face, you know, getting more famous and making our third album, like, we're back. The devil's back. We did it again. And we're going to blow your minds again. Love ain't got nothing on me. But the most experimental, I would say, it's uh, Mad Love. Very hip-hop, jazz, like, funk-oriented. And not really like Wild City. It's a lot more hip-hop. It's a lot more, like, you know, the, the verses are kind of more, like, rappy. I'm not going to say that they're rapping because she's not rapping, but she's, like, speaking them more. I definitely could find myself, like, grooving to it if I'm in that kind of mood. It's probably the least expected sounding track on the record because most of it up until that point is, like, very rock sounding. So, or some kind of, like, classic rock element base to it. This doesn't really have that at all. So in conclusion, this one's a lot more experimental, but I mean, I feel like artists really need that. They need, it, it delves into every type of rock or, and even like beyond rock, which is amazing. And like, not everybody can pull that off. It goes from, you know, being really dark, being really slow, being really energetic and fast to being happy and like, you know, nostalgic at the same time. It's definitely a fun record. It goes into a lot of different areas. And since they're able to successfully pull it off, like that goes to show that they are a good rock band. I mean, there, there's nothing really more that can prove it than this album. So I think all their fans are gonna like this album. Yeah, so check out the album for sure. I definitely recommend listening to it. And if you like it, go to one of their shows. You won't regret it, I promise. They put on an amazing performance, a lot of energy, a lot of rock behind it, a lot of passion.